I'm standing really close to Mike because we only have one microphone. That's because we blew all our money on our latest project car, 2016 Chevrolet Corvette. So this is the uh, Z51 package. It includes a few extra things over the uh, regular Stingray, but it's not quite as fancy as the Z06. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get it in the shop here, get it up on the lift and our uh, tech guy, Mike Kojima, is gonna get in there and talk all about it. I am an engineer, you know. Oh yeah, an engineer. <laughs> like we said, this is the Z51 package. That package includes bigger wheels and tires, bigger brakes in the front, exhaust upgrades, suspension upgrades, better leaf springs, better shocks, Let's get some aero stuff. And more cooling. More cooling stuff, it's got transmission cooler. Uh, I think it has improved differential cooling. Yep. Also comes with electronic limited slip differential. It's, it's a pretty impressive car for just straight from the factory, I think. I mean, it's pretty good for the track, just how it is. You want to go over some of the basic engineering of the car and some of the cool things that are underneath it just from the factory? Yeah, let's take a look. Well, this uh, Corvette has a lot of cool stuff. I mean, some of it's like extra touches here like you see they have this like skid skid bar here so when you're driving around you, you it's a lot harder to get and smash all the arrow I mean that's a nice little touch that you don't think of too much and uh, there's aerodynamic details like you see there's the diffuser here with a vortex generator and it has like a little air deflector here to um, increase some of the the pressure differential so more air will kind of flow through the diffuser into the wheel wall area. That's a nice little detail. Uh, another thing, if you notice, the car is like a really almost a flat bottom from the factory. So uh, it's completely sealed from the, uh, the lip of the air dam all the way to the front cross member. And the whole rest of the car is practically a flat bottom. Your cross member here is this uh, nice alloy casting uh, really large and cross-sectional area, so it's really stiff. And the suspension bolts straight to that. You can see it bolts directly to the chassis without the normal uh, gushy bushing. It's maybe a little bit worse for MVH, but you know, I'll take the stiffness any day. Uh, the bushings are small diameter and, and uh, high durometer, so the bushings don't have that much give in it compared to your typical stock bushing. And they're fully adjustable with Eccentrics front and rear, so you can adjust the camber and caster just by turning these Eccentrics. The uh, steering rack and the sway bar are also bolt directly to the cross member, so it's one strong integrated stiff unit. If you look at uh, the tie rod placement, if you were designing a suspension for low bump steer, you want to draw a line between the upper and the lower control arm pivots and you get the angle of the upper and lower control arm and the tie rod should lie on the line that bisects that angle and the inner tie rod should be at the line of the upper and lower pivots and this Corvette is really close to being a really low um, bump steer steering geometry and a lot of cars they overlook that stuff nowadays. And some of the other things that are interesting is uh, it has a relatively lower front to rear uh, roll center, which I think is a good design practice. And uh, the overall uh, front anti-dive geometry is a pretty low percentage, so I kind of like that. If you have too much anti-dive, uh, the car will tend to want to understeer, like if you're trail braking and stuff. And that's why I want to keep, uh, like the cars that I'm doing, I want to keep the uh, anti-squat geometry pr percentage fairly low. Um, perhaps the most unusual thing about the Corvette is this uh, composite fiber uh, leaf spring. Now a lot of uh, Corvette aficionados don't, don't like the leaf spring and they take it out and put do coilovers or something, but I feel that the leaf spring has some inherent advantages. I mean, I guess some of the disadvantages are is that you can't really easily change the spring rate with this trick <laughs> composite leaf spring. Um, but one of the advantages is, is that your coil spring tends to put a uh, side load on your um, uh, shock shaft and the shock shaft could experience two, three, four hundred pounds of side load just from the uh, 
motion of the spring as it compresses, and that can cause stiction, which causes the um, uh, like unpredictable behavior in the damper and spring assembly. So by running this leaf spring, you're isolating the, uh, the spring and the damper so you don't have any of that kinking or stiction in there. And it's a pretty significant advantage. Um, if you look at a lot of late model car designs that run coil springs, you'll probably notice that they are starting to run the, um, the spring and the, and the shock separately and they're getting away from coilovers, especially in the rear. And one of those reasons is to avoid the spring kinking force. Uh, and the Corvette, by running this leaf spring, you totally get rid of that. Moving on down, uh, a, a really nice thing I think is uh, this engine is dry sumped. So the pump is in the sump and it pumps all of the oil out to a reservoir where it gets deaerated and you can cool it down with a cooler and then it uh, pumps it back to the, the mains. And this way the engine has a good supply of oil, you know, even under high G loads. Uh, it also enables the oil pan to be lower profile and not have such a deep sump. So you notice the oil pan uh, is not the lowest part of the car. This particular model has a uh, heat exchanger right here for the oil. It's a pretty big one. We're gonna, we're gonna make it even better, but it has one and a lot of cars overlook that nowadays. Uh, moving on to the back, uh, you have this plate here, which is uh, metal. This kind of helps aerodynamics, it helps chassis stiffness, and it also, if you were to have a composite panel back here, there's a good chance it would burn up. It has these holes, which maybe mess up the arrow a little bit, but it's good for air circulation around the exhaust, and the Corvette has a bit of trickness in the trans tunnel. Um, it uses an insulation called Aerogel, which was developed for uh, the space shuttle. It was one of the first applications, but it's a silica fiber that is mostly air, and it's one of the best insulations that you can get. Um, way better than your typical fiberglass or your, your silica wraps and all that. And I don't know if we can see it in the camera, but the Aerogel is sandwiched between this kind of heavy gauge, almost like foil stuff. Even though your exhaust is mounted up high and in the tunnel for aerodynamics, it's not gonna make the inside of your car that hot. This Corvette is one of the only front engine cars that has more weight on the rear wheels. And the big thing about that is it has a transaxle. The transaxle is not way in the back, so um, transaxle means that you have your differential and your transmission all in one unit. So uh, here's your transaxle, here's the differential. There's a torque tube that uh, separates it from the engine and clutch. So this, this heavy boy is back here. It's not like up there like it is typically. Like the front, the back has a huge hollow uh, cast aluminum, super stiff cross member that the suspension mounts onto. Uh, the transaxle also mounts on it and it has these really elaborate um, mounts that um, I'm not sure why they're so crazy. I mean, they have a lot of uh, travel and a lot of movement. Uh, the aftermarket has like a lot of billet and urethane uh, stiffeners where you can like kind of pack this thing so it, it doesn't move around so much. Um, I kind of think maybe that it allows so much movement because not just for NVH reduction, but uh, maybe with the torque tube, the um, engine and transaxle actually move around together. So this is actually acting like a uh, rear motor mount. And, and the whole torque tube engine assembly probably actually helps uh, stiffen the carbon bending. but. Uh, instead of having motor mounts and then uh, tranny mounts, it, it's like a whole integrated thing. So from the front of the car to the rear of the car actually moves under torque reaction. And maybe that's some of the reason why that's like that. I'm kind of guessing, but it is a little unusual. Like the uh, front suspension, we have this composite rear leaf spring. And the rear suspension has a decent amount of anti-squad in it. Not a, not a crazy amount, but it has some, some anti-squat. Um, I kind of think that I'm not a big fan of running a lot of anti-squat geometry myself, but uh, you know, compared to like a lot of cars, like, like a 911, 
will have more anti-squat than this car. Uh, the other thing is this car has a fairly high rear roll center, but I think that's kind of good. I, the personal opinion of mine is I always feel like the front roll center should be uh, lower than the rear, and I think that get, makes the car uh, take a set better, and it kind of helps more stability when you're on the gas and corner exit. It gives a more natural feel to the car, so I think that's a good thing. The differential has a... Uh, uh, it's a clutch type, but it, instead of having your, your typical springs, it has uh, hydraulic uh, servos that put pressure on the clutch plates. So this limited slip can be, uh, it can run anywhere from like an open diff to almost fully locked up, depending on uh, an algorithm that, in, that its ECU is commanding it to do. So uh, this thing here is the uh, hydraulic pump for the differential. You know, it's electric powered and the high pressure hydraulic lines, you can kind of see they feed into the differential on either side here. And uh, they're applying pressure to the, the clutch packs, like these are the hydraulic lines. Since the uh, differential is really integrated into the uh, vehicle's uh, vehicle dynamic control and it's ABS and a bunch of other things, um, you could probably really dick this thing up with some heavy-handed aftermarket tuning. So this car is um, pretty much a technological terror. There's like a lot of state-of-the-art um, electronics in this thing. A lot of things that you wouldn't think of are integrated into the vehicle dynamic control, um, the differential control, the brake force distribution control, and um, the stability control. So if you change the calibration of these things, if you thoughtlessly put big brakes on it, if you change the spring rates outside of certain parameters, uh, if you go too crazy with the tires, the calibration of all these systems could be off. You have to be really careful when you modify like uh, these high-end late model cars, but we're not afraid of that and we're gonna tackle that. Well, thanks for doing that, Mike. Appreciate that. That was a very thorough, uh analysis and very good point you made about the uh, uh, modifying it and that's going to be a challenge for us however Chevrolet performance has this uh, thing in their catalog called the ultimate Corvette stingray so they got their upgraded suspension uh, this is the t1 suspension that I guess they developed for their SCC for SCCA program. yeah yep. z06 grill z06 aero stuff chassis braces Z06 cooling, carbon fiber torque tube and prop shaft. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Z06 brakes. The brakes would be really important because if the uh, brake bias distribution gets messed up, then all the stability control and all that stuff gets messed up. And that's really hard to do from the aftermarket. Yeah, right? there's like very... Optimizing for a single car doesn't make sense. It's great that the factory's doing it. Yep. So, we're going to do this project a little different than most of our projects. We're going to put on all the factory parts first and uh, quantify this ultimate package. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this thing to the track, get a baseline test for it, then we'll stick all the parts on, and then test it again. We're, are we running Bud and Willow Configuration 13? Of course, it's kind of like our, the Nürburgring of America, sort of California, or America, yeah. Yeah, and everybody else knows what a good time is there, so that'd be probably one of the best places to go. Yep. All right, let's do this. Stay tuned.